Hi, DJ Hurley from MKFM here, and this weekend, Friday night, I was lucky enough to be on stage once again at the Marshall Arena in Milton Keynes. Joining me was Blazing Squad, E17, A1, 911, and Peter Andre. So a real throwback to two decades of kind of boy bands and pop music. And um, it, was, it was something about it, something about the event for me that was just very different to the last two times that I've DJed um, at the Marshall Arena. I was asked to host this event, which means basically uh, Microphone Jute is introducing all the artists throughout the evening. Last week, sorry, I'm still yawning now, I'm still tired now. Um, last week, I was completely ill and just com completely out of it for the entire week. I've not worked on any YouTube videos, not done any mixes to put up on YouTube. Yeah, just, just completely out of it. Had a stomach bug at the beginning of the week. Myself, my wife, my son, my daughter avoided it, fortunately. Um, and it just really wiped us out. Whether it was a different vari variation of COVID, with this, I think the new variant's got like sickness and stuff with it, so it could have been that. We don't know. Um, but then a couple of days into that, you're already feeling lethargic and completely drained from all the vomiting and everything. You, got no uh, no food inside you, no energy inside your body. Um, none of us wanted to eat or drink. <laughs> well, we had to drink, obviously, fluids to stop dehydrating. But that leads me into what happened next. So a couple of days into the illness, um, I then started noticing that I had, uh, I was peeing blood. And uh, from there, it's um, transpired that it's kidney stones. Now, I suffered with this good few years ago had to have kidney stones removed um the pain the medical staff always say that kidney stone pain is second only to what ladies would experience during pregnancy as pain um i don't know but <laughs> nothing would nothing would hold the pain off at all um paracetamols um cocodamol ibuprofen it, it just doesn't didn't matter what i took um you know over the medicine counters uh sorry over the counter medicines um nothing nothing held it off and i was already tired and lethargic from the bug then with the pain of the kidney stones you know you couldn't stand up you couldn't sit down you couldn't lay down you couldn't walk you couldn't move but if you did anything for a long period of time then that hurt so you know if you did sit down you'd have to get back up again. Or if you did lay down, you'd have to get back up again. Um, it's absolutely horrendous. And it the pain presents itself in multiple areas, not just one as well. Um, so like down below in my man regions, around the back and your kidneys. Uh, this time, I've never experienced this before. Also up into the stomach. Uh, well, that's kind of what it felt like. Um, yeah, just all, all manner of pains all over the place. Discomfort. Um, I had to basically try and flush the uh, stone through myself, so constantly drinking water, which meant I'm constantly going to the toilet to pee it, uh, you know, pee it back out again. <laughs> um, it was a nightmare, and it kind of got to like everyone was saying to me, "What are you doing about Friday night? Are you going to be? Are you going to play? Are you going to be DJing? What are you going to do?" Um, I, I was like, I've, "I'll leave it till kind of midday, you know, twelve o'clock, one o'clock um, on the day of the event." I don't want to leave it any later than that to call the promoters to say, listen, you're going to have to get someone else in to do it. Um, I must have passed the kidney stone early hours of Friday morning because the gig was on Friday night. And um, I noticed kind of 10, 11, or the pain had subsided. By 12 and 1, it was like, yeah, OK, I, there isn't any pain. I mean, I'm knackered by this point because I've not had a, a decent night's sleep in five, five or six nights through the week. Um well, it, was, it was horrendous, but I did, I did go and do the event. Um, if anyone got any footage of me, you, you'll know that I was, I was sweating profusely. I had a towel on the go, um, four bottles of water on the, on the desk, you know, on the deck stand next to me, um, constantly drinking, constantly wiping. I felt really feverish actually behind the decks. That's how I felt. Um, hope none of the artists have gone home this weekend and got, got anything. Hopefully they're fine. I think the stomach bug cleared up or whatever I had. Um, I say that I'm not 100% now still, but 
Um, it was the kidney pain that then really whacked me pain wise. I was like, I can't stand behind the decks and and play or even just stand and use the microphone properly w without being in pain. Um, but it was fine. I was say it was fine. But yeah, it was um, so also what was different about the gig, which wasn't like the last time, like in um, April and uh, Halloween again of 2023, I played at the MKFM events at the Marshall Arena. And now it was MKFM, as far as I'm aware, that ran them and put them on. This event was put on by uh, a promotion team. Um, and it was just kind of in partnership with MKFM. Um, so I was kind of the, the representative, if you like, the face of MKFM uh, for the event. And that's, I think that's pretty much all our input was, really, to be honest with you. But what was really different was I never got to meet any of the artists. Now, the last two events, um, I was able to meet everybody, like Baby D, Rosala, uh, Artful Dodger, Fast and Small, uh, Living Joy. It's fantastic, like backstage, or even just down the side of the stage, they'd, be, they'd even be hanging around and sort of kind of dancing with us, you know. <laughs> that was really nice. But this time, all the artists were very much chaperoned to the stage, up onto the stage and back off again. I was on the stage with um, Blazing Scott as the first act, never made eye contact with me once. I'm literally on the stage with them because I was, having, I, I was the one playing their music um, from the CDJs, but not once did one of the guys, there's four in the group, um, Blazing Squad used to be loads of people, it was like 15, 20, <laughs> 20 man strong, but now it's just four that go out on the road and perform as Blazing Squad. Um, but yeah, not one of them turned around and made eye contact with me at all. Um, it's like, hi, hello. <laughs> Um, and with any of the other artists, I didn't control their music. Um, nothing, nothing. It was very bizarre. Peter Andre, six six security strong team in front of him. Uh, beeline straight from the closed dressing room straight onto the stage back again, but with the security. Um, yeah, very bizarre. So people are like, "Oh, did you get any photographs with anyone?" Nope. Oh, what are they like? Don't know. Didn't get a chance to speak to anyone. It was very bizarre. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe I just wasn't mentally in the right place for it. Not that that affects me seeing artists or being able to take photographs with artists and things like that. That just didn't happen. That just didn't present itself. The opportunities just weren't there. Um, very bizarre. <laughs> very bizarre. So, yeah, not every not every gig is the same. That's three times I've played at the Marshall Arena and not once has the, the, the gig been the same. On the following night, it was so on Saturday night at the Marshall Arena, it was the same promotion team uh, working with Worried About Henry. So that's a drum and bass night. And so it's all the same sound system, same lighting, sta same stage setup. Interestingly, the setup that I had as the DJ, so just so you know, was um, four CDJs, uh, 3,000. And it was a... Uh, DJM, so Pioneer Mixer, DJM 900 Nexus 2 this time, whereas the last event in Halloween that I played there, we had Andy C on the following night. I think it was Worried About Henry with Andy C headlining, and that was a Pioneer, same mixer I've got, the A9. Um, but yeah, this uh, DJM A9, but this one was uh, 900 Nexus 2. Not, not that affected anything. Um, I was able to play on it. I, I'm glad this, they were CDJ 3000s. Because obviously that is what I'm used to using. I'm so used to using the um, the Q buttons. I do use them, hot cues. The sound, the sound in the Marshall Arena. Here's an interesting one. If you're a DJ, um, the the reflections. So um, the like the, well the reverb, but the the room reflections. So if the monitors are off, you're standing on the stage. If the if the venue's empty, if the monitors are off and you haven't got your headphones on, if you're playing music, the speakers are very directional, especially the way they'd had them set up on the Friday night, very directional. So that basically means unless you're standing in front of the speakers, getting the sound coming at you, the sound bounces around all over the place in there. It really does. So it, it's horrible. Like the reflections are genuinely horrible. They'll bounce off of the edges of the venue, side walls. It will reflect back from the, the, the back wall. And it's it's really horrible. So unless, so for me, I have to I trap myself into the headphones. I kept the headphones on all night. Use my Sennheiser HD twenty fives. Uh, so glad I did. Perfect. Um, 
the monitor stacks were not as big as they were last time either. So the monitor, the monitors for DJs either side were huge last year. Um, this year, no, nah, not so big, not so big. Everything was very bass heavy as well. My son noticed that. Um, he, he commented and said everything was as soon as the first band come on. So um, Blazing Squad, they kind of cranked up the audio a bit and um, it was way too bass heavy. I actually had this camera, my Sony a6700 um, on a switch pod. So uh, a solid uh, tabletop tripod. And I had it filming me just to capture my own, um, you know, to, to, to use for like shorts and stuff like that. I can't use any of the footage. I literally can't use any of the footage at all. None, none whatsoever. I've grabbed some still images, but they're not really in focus properly. Um, yeah, I can't use any of the video footage I took on the night for any content because the it's just constantly shaking. So the bass rumble coming through through the stage um, was terrible. <laughs> it was. It really wasn't for me. Um, I'm in two minds as to, like, am I glad I did the gig? Um, yes, I'll always be glad I did the gig. Did I enjoy the gig? Did I enjoy it? I enjoyed what I did. I got lots of praise for what I did. So that that's always nice, obviously. Um, who wouldn't want that? Um, I don't know. I just, it was different. It was different. That's kind of basically what I'm trying to say here. Um, yeah, maybe I wasn't in the right place to do the gig. Um, everything was very different about it. I think what I was just trying to say is this is just almost like a little bit of a uh, a sounding off or, a, I don't know, I was going to use the word vlog, whatever. Um, I just wanted to share with you that like not all, not all events, not all gigs um, are the same or feel the same. Uh, nothing went wrong with mixing or anything like that. Nothing went wrong from an audio uh, or, or technical perspective from my end. So there's nothing I could really mention there. Oh, there were a few times I picked up the wireless mic to talk because uh, I felt I felt now would be the right time to say something. Just hype the crowd up. <laughs> and I kind of, I've dropped the volume down on the mixer. Mic in hand, gone to say something. And, um, you, you know, everyone can see my lips moving, but no sound coming out. That's because the guy at the side of the stage who was uh, part of the production team, I hadn't put the mic up. Uh, you see, there were, you know, there were niggly things, but no, not not from a not from a mixing and DJing point of view. Everything was was working fine for me. Yeah, it's a mad ramble, isn't it? Sorry. Listen, I'm going to try and make sure I get some more mixes back up onto YouTube. Uh, my raving seven video just went off the chart. I think it must have been sitting on YouTube's homepage or something for ages. It's had the most views of any of my videos. If you have subscribed to my channel off the back of that video, thank you so much. Um, yeah, the life of a DJ. No, maybe it's because I'm old school and I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. It would have been nice to meet the artist. I'd met them on both the other occasions and this time it just didn't happen. Um, if you were there, if you were at the event, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed the night. Um, I've had mixed reactions from people um, on the night regarding the audio quality of the bands, of the artists that were performing. Some said the mics were hard to hear. Some said the music was loud. Some said music was low. For, for the artists, I mean, not for me. Um, my sound was pretty consistent as it was, which, which is fine, which is good. Um, but just for the artists. So it'd be a shame if people didn't enjoy the artists as well. Uh, I think most people did, don't get me wrong. I think most people did. But it's, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm waffling. Listen, I'm out of here. I'll let you get some time back. Go and watch some interesting videos on YouTube instead of this old man waffling. Ciao.